Okay, so we're here today with uh, Robin Oka over from the US, racing in the uh, uh, TO2 series here at Bathurst. Let's see what he thinks about the anticipation of getting out on track this morning. All right, how do you feel about that? I think it's starting to set in. Getting a little nervous about it. Getting um, a little nervous? But still, you know, excited beyond belief. Um, you know, walking the track, you know, two days ago and then yesterday again. So you walked uh, around a couple of times yeah, now? Yeah, just trying to, you know, take in the, you know, the elevation, trying to, you know, when you walk it versus driving it. Um, sure. You know, you kind of get to take in everything a little slower. So you've sim raced it. Yeah. Probably, I imagine, <laughs> forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've done a bunch of laps on it on the sim. Um, obviously, after walking it, it's like, I don't really know how much this helped. <laughs> like the elevation, yeah. you just can't get used to it. Yeah, you to just it, don't, right? you know, on the sim, you just don't get the sense of the elevation. You don't get the sense of, like, the feeling of the banking. You know, you just don't get that, the seat of the the seat of the pants feel you know i've walked the track a number of times it's actually a long walk around oh, yeah. that track. <laughs> it is yeah it's um yeah it, it's like the distance of the track it's a fairly long track is mm -hmm. it is it the longest track that you've raced on uh no i've actually uh road america up in wisconsin um sure. is two tenths of a mile longer um, sure. so i think that's about half a kilometer okay longer. Right. Um, yeah. Nice. The difference with that is that's a lot more straights, um, sure. and not as much elevation. Yeah. A lot of elevation for the U.S. standards, mm. but not for here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so you've had quite a long history for young. You're 18 years old now, mm -hmm. right? So you've been racing since you were four or five years old. Yeah. Yeah. I started karts when I was five. Um, you know, did that until I was 12. Uh, actually, when I was 12, I was doing both carts and cars. Sure, sure. Um, I was actually second or uh, leading the championship in carts that year, and we had a conflicting date for both carts and cars. And right. it's like, well, it's kind of the the split in the road on do I stick with carts, you know, and try to get good at carts and move up. So, those what was ranks. the first car that you took out on track and race? Uh, a NC Miata. Oh, um, Miata. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So. You know, I, the first time so they're, on, uh, they're out MX-5s. Yeah, here, yeah. Right? So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so the first time I was on, a, on any racetrack with any car was Road Atlanta. Road Atlanta, okay. So, you know, Road Atlanta in the U.S. is kind of, you know, elevation-wise pretty close to what this would be. Sure, sure. Um, so, you know, that's what we kind of, that's the track we call throwing someone in the deep end of. Yeah. And, you know... Uh, you, you, at an early age, you went to the Skip Barber mm -hmm. School of Driving yep. over in America there. Yep. And because uh, of your driving skills at that early age, they let you in a couple of years early, which is unusual. Tell yeah, us about they, that. Yeah, uh, you know, we, during carts that, uh, when I was 11, they were, we met someone that went through Skip Barber and said that, you know, hey, you know, they're, they're taking in people that are younger now and... You know, if you want to go into cars, you know, it's a perfect opportunity to go be able to do it. And, you know, we we talked around with some people from there and sent over, you know, all of my, my racing resume and stuff. And, you sure. know, they looked through everything. And just, What was involved with that driving course? Obviously, so they it's did, a racing course. Yeah, so they did, uh, like, skid pad training. Um, you know, they they wet the, the, wet the skid pad down so you get some... You know, drifting practice. Yep, yep. Um, car control practice. And also just... Uh, cornering and apexes. Yeah, and all cornering, that apexes, a lot of classroom time. Sure. Um, you know, we had a lot of lead follow time at, you know, about half pace. Mm. Just to get a feel of what the cars are capable of. Sure. So they don't just throw us out there and say, go, you know, go do whatever. Um, so it was really... It was a really... Um, deep course on so you, you've uh, moved up to TA2 racing oh they call it TA2 in the US yeah so TA2 I believe the cars are a little bit set up a bit different mm -hmm. there's a lot more roll cage and stuff in the US cars I think as well yeah well the these are how chassis um, and yeah, they still racing. run yep. they run the exact same chassis in the US sure. there's just two other options on okay. top of that you can run okay um, you know you have tire differences our tires are a bias ply instead of a radial. 
Um, so there's a lot more give to the tire, yeah. um, which makes it a lot more difficult to drive. So have you been and out on these Hoosiers at any stage? Okay. No. no, we used to run, uh, TA2 in America used to run Hoosiers about two or three years ago. Sure, sure. Um, and they switched over trying to go, I think they're trying to make the cars a little faster. Mm. Um, and it depends on who you talk to. Like, the, like for me, the... The bias ply isn't that difficult to drive. Yeah, but they, if you're, these if, do move around yeah. a bit. But the guys that are actually racing on these Hoosiers mm -hmm. and, and haven't raced on anything else, yeah. they love them. Mm -hmm. They they use that movement yeah. across the track, you know. Yeah, and so. I think I think the the whole package over here is just a lot better. Sure. You know, it puts more into the driver's hands and less into how much you know the team comes down to the, it yeah. comes down to the driver skill yeah. level you've got because the cars are. All basically identical. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether it's the Challenger, whether it's the Camaro, whether it's the Mustang. They're all running the LS engine. Yep. And uh, is that the same engine that is run in the US? Yeah, that's what we run. Um, we have we actually have four engine options in the US. Four engine yeah, options. So there's two right. LSs, um, a Hemi, and then a Ford engine. Sure. Um, majority of the field runs the LS just for you know the cost effectiveness of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but there's you know in the US we have a lot more leniency on you know the components we can use like okay. we can use different brake packages different shock sure. packages transmissions the only thing so. that changes here is the extra weight you have to carry if you're, <laughs> if you're a light fellow but yeah. if there's a couple of heavy guys here that are you know well over 100 kgs and they don't need to carry much weight in the car yeah. right so yeah and the the weights of the cars over here they're slightly lighter than what we are sure um, sure so but yeah i think you know it's Obviously, going to be a challenge. Um, just not only the you know slight differences in the car, um, but also the track. Because I'm sure it's going to be thrill of a lifetime, right? Oh, yeah. So, and hopefully we see you over here more often. <laughs> Thank you.